days today. <laughs> Believe it or not, it's been more than five weeks. Six weeks. Six weeks since we moved on the boat. And the teams are working hard to get everything done. We've been through our test plan and we've got a snag list. 150 items or so. We've got plumbers and electricians and carpenters working furiously to get us ready to leave in just a couple of weeks. Yeah, won't be too long before we head to Cape Town. A little bit more work there and then across the ocean. So what are we doing today? Well, it's interesting that you ask because most of the time we try to find videos with a really wide audience and everybody's interested in it. But this time it's a very specific set of people that might be interested in our video because we're going to talk about how to get your Plex system to run when there's no internet. I'm sorry, what was that? <laughs> No, I, I understand this is really important and when you're on the ocean for weeks on end. Mm -hmm. It's very important to have music and some, you know, movies and stuff to, to watch, but, you know, the details of it. Yep. If you're not familiar with Plex or the Synology web server that we've installed, check out this video right here, right here, um, and you can learn more about that. But for right now, let's go through the steps that you need to go through to get your system to be independent of the Internet. I think I have a sock drawer to clean out now. Okay. See ya. Unhandcuffing your Plex media server from the internet is pretty key if you plan to use it in places where there is no internet service like out in the middle of the ocean. This involves three steps. Step number one, you need to tell Plex to allow insecure connections. Step number two, tell Plex what devices are allowed to access the server and finally, tell your devices where they can find the media server itself. Let's stop here for a second and talk about the differences between devices and media server and the hardware. Here's the situation. We have a hardware platform called a NAS or Network At Attached Server. And on that NAS, there's a software application called a media server app that runs. It's a big beefy server app, and it's the one that organizes all the data and presents it to your devices, your tablets, your iPhones, your, your uh, TVs, other devices all over the boat that you're going to use to consume the media. And there's a Plex app that runs on each one of your devices. Now it gets a little bit confusing because the media server app interface looks very similar to the Plex app itself, but you can always tell because the media server app's got a picture of a ranch up in the corner, so it's pretty easy to see. So step one, we need to tell Plex to allow insecure connections. We're gonna do this both on the media server and in the applications on all the devices itself. So open up Plex on each one of your devices and go into advanced and just tell it allow insecure connections. Do this for every single device that you've got on your network that you're going to run Plex on. The next thing we need to do is tell Plex which devices are allowed to use the server. So in this case, you're going to go into the media server app. There's that wrench that I talked about. We're going to go down to network. We're going to scroll down until we actually see a line that says list of IP addresses and networks that allowed, are allowed without authorization. And in this case, type in this exact range. This is an entire range of IP addresses. Finally, what we're going to do is then tell our devices where to find the media server itself. Now, this too gets a little bit confusing because typically what happens in this situation is your DHCP server or your dynamic allocation server assigns an IP address to your NAS. That IP address can change every single time that you turn the NAS on or bring it back up or every 48 hours. It can, it's very, it's a dynamic. So in this case, what has to happen is when your TV or your tablet or your phone wants to find the server, it goes out to the Motherplex home at the other side of the internet and says, hey, what's the IP address for the media server that I should be using? And the system then comes back and says the currently assigned IP address for your server is 168, 192, blah, blah, blah. What we need to do is we need to give independence from that mother server by allowing your system to have a specific IP address, a static IP address that's assigned to it all the time. In order to assign a static IP address, we need to do a couple of steps. We need to determine the machine address or MAC address of our server. 
we need to go into our router and say always assign this MAC address the same IP address and then we need to go tell all the devices this is the, the IP address that we're going to be using going forward so that you don't actually have to go out to the mother server on the internet to figure out where it is. So, step three, tell your devices where to find the media server. We're going to start by finding the MAC address. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can find your MAC address, but I'm using a simple little application and this application is going to allow me, and I'll put the link down below, it's going to allow me to see the MAC addresses of all the devices on my network. And you can see that very first one that came up was the island server. Now I'm going to go into my router. I'm going to go to the network configuration of my router. And I'm going to tell my router that what I want to do is assign a static IP address. I'm going to add a new static IP address. I'm going to type in the MAC address and the IP address that I want and save it. From then on, every time the server sees my island drive NAS, it's going to then assign that specific IP address. Next thing we need to do then is we need to go into the application, the web server application, and say from now on your IP address is going to be whatever the number is we just assigned. So we're going to assign a static IP address inside of the application itself. So we go down to again network customer access URLs right there and we assign a static IP address. Finally, we need to go into each one of the individual devices on our network, our TVs, our Macs, our um, iPads or whatever and say, okay, when you're looking for the server, instead of going and asking the mother out on the internet, just go to this IP address. So we're going to go into each one of the individual applications. We're going to go to settings. Then we're going to go to, there it is, network. And then we're going to go down to server connections and click plus. It's going to allow us to enter a specific IP address. And then we're done. We're just going to do that on every single app. And that's all it. Hope this was helpful. If something wasn't clear or you do have questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, we will look forward to seeing you next time, probably, hopefully, for a little bit more entertaining video. Thanks. Probably, hopefully.